Hey kiddos, so this is going to be a short intro. I'm doing a collab over on Crafted by Corey. I'm wobbling because I'm having to hold this thing and this is like the 10th try. So there is a playlist link below. We're going to do a tear tray and minis challenge. Check out everybody in the playlist and tell everybody over there that I sent you. Now let's get to the video. Okay guys, so I got this sign from Dollar Tree, of course, back at Valentine's Day. The side of it had a little bit of a little hook on it, so I was just using those nippers to nip it off and the sanding block to make it smooth. The color of the paint that I'm going to use for the sign is called Waverly Ink, and it's the chalk paint, um, the same one I use all the time. This little bee came from the gardening section and it was like, it had a little welcome part of it. And I'm gonna save that for a video that I'm gonna do on Tuesday. So now you can see I'm just taking my um, stick and dragging what I can out of there and I'll have to open up the other one, but I, you know, I'm trying to use everything I got. So make sure you get the edges really good on this. And then in the end, I will cover it with a piece of paper on the back, piece of brown paper. Now, welcome to our honeycomb is the um, uh, wording that I'm using on here. I saw this at uh, Hobby Lobby and just thought, oh my gosh, that's so cute. So I love it. It took me a little minute to get this off. Um, This is speeded up quite a bit so it did take me a little bit because the bee has antennas on him and they were real thin so um it took me a minute to keep those down and that's what's taken me so long here to put it through now i'm going to take the bee here in a minute and first i'm going to make him a little bow for his uh behind because there's a hole in it so i'm trying to cover up the hole you know i'm always trying to cover up the hole so i use the uh B to cover up the hole on the sign and then I had to have something to cover up the hole on the B. So the bow I'm making is I first was going to put it up there and then I was like no I think I'm going to put it on his behind. So I make me a little bow and when I make bows I use wire to tie the middle really tight um, especially if the bow doesn't have wire or the ribbon doesn't have wire in it I will use a little piece of floral wire. Now I hot glued the B on there and then I'm going to hot glue the bow to He's behind. It'd be cute. So here it is on my coffee bar. And it looks blue, but I think that's the filter that I used. See how it went to black? I thought it turned out cute. Okay, so here's our second DIY. And I had this little, um, it's the small flag, B flag from Dollar General. And then I took this 11 by 13 frame and I just took the back off and I'm just going to wrap it around. Now I had to iron it because I wanted the wrinkles out of it. Um, if you don't care about wrinkles, then you could just put it in there like that. But I didn't like the wrinkles. I am only putting this in here temporary because when I take this off the coffee bar in a month, I want to put it out in my yard. So I'm just going to use painter's tape because it's going to be super easy to take off. Um, and then I can just, I can still use it. If I used hot glue, it would mess the flag up because that is a nylon and hot glue could melt the nylon. So this was, you know, what I used for now. I thought it would be cute for right now. So I'm taking and folding it along and then I don't want the edges to to fold out into the frame. So I just put an extra little piece and fold them down. And then I put it all back in and then I'm like, oh, it's kind of plain. So those beads are from um, that chandelier I did a couple of weeks back. Um, and I'm just going to put them in a baggie. And I saw this trick where, because these beads are so tiny, put the paint in a baggie. And then since it was chalk paint, I added a little bit of water to it. I should have put just a little bit more paint in there. Um, but it kind of gave it a distressed look because it didn't cover them completely. If I had put a little more paint in there, it, they would have been perfect. Um, and they almost dried immediately. So if you don't put too much paint, then it works pretty good. Now I took a piece of wire and I hot glued a piece of real thin um, twine on the edge of it, made a loop, made my own kind of needle, and that's how I threaded the um, beads on there. Um, last time I used a piece of tape, but these were so, the holes were so tiny that I knew that tape would not go through there. Um, so that's why I um, use the, the little needle. Now I make a little handle for the top or a hanger from the top, and then I'm like, it's still kind of boring, and I've got all these beads, so I'm like, I'm going to make it kind of a little ruffle at the bottom. So I beat them all up and then I divide it, um, figure out where my divide is. And then I just make um, four little loops 
and I hot glue it here in a minute onto the back of the frame. So I can still get in and get the, the flag out, but I, cause I put it on the frame and it is, um, that frame is plastic. So it will come off fairly easy if I want to use the frame for something else. But I actually think I'm just gonna get a new flag and put a different flag in there for every time I do my coffee bar because I thought that it turned out super cute. And when I painted that, I didn't I meant to mention that when I put that paint in that baggie and did those beads, they that covered them, I mean, within less than a minute, I had them completely covered. I mean, I just rolled it around in there several little times and that was it. Now, if you've ever painted beads, you know how long it takes. This is the best trick I have seen so far, and I have seen several people use it, so I can't really say I saw it from one or another because I've seen it a, a ton of times. So I'm telling you, this is the way to paint these beads. It's perfect. So now then I'm just going to hot glue all these on here. You know, I've got the beads at the bottom or the little fringe, and then I turn it over and... I'm in love with it. And I think it's going to turn out great for all my seasons when I change my bar out. So here's DIY number three. So I got seven of these. Um, I think I should have gotten maybe like nine. But if I had just moved one over in the end, you'll know what I'm talking about. So first I just take the plastic out and I take, I take out the back of the frame. And apparently this is a, like a picture frame. You could use this as a picture frame because there's that little mat and then that. And I'm like, oh, well, didn't know that. I thought it was all one piece. So um, I use the mat as um, my guide. And I have five, you know, I'm looking through my paper and I only have five different colors of gold paper, which, you know, seems like a lot. But if you knew how much paper I had, you'd be like, well, you've only got five pieces. So anyways, so I have two of a couple of them. So like this piece, and then there's another piece that I have a couple of. So I just take that white marker from, um, Dollar Tree and trace around it. And then I do that to all seven pieces and cut them out. So lickety split and boom, there you go. Got seven pieces and this one's a really quick one. So you just put them back, you put the paper back in and now make sure that you're cutting the paper in the direction. I mean, these would go in any, you could turn it any way, but make sure that when you're cutting, like if you have lines that you do it straight up and down at least to, from one point to the other. Now these just, the frames just twist back on and then there you go. I thought these would also make a great little, if it's in your kitchen, uh, menu thing. Cause you know, you could use the dry erase markers on there and just write, okay, taco Tuesday and uh, hamburger Friday and pizza Saturday or, you know, whatever. Um, but I, I love the way it turned out. It's super cute for this. See, I think I need one more over here and I would be happy or maybe one more at the top. All right, for our fourth DIY, we're going to take those glass vases from Dollar Tree and we're going to, I picked, I had like five different bottles of gold that I bought the other day because I couldn't decide and I didn't want to open them at the store. So they were 30% off. So, you know, of course you need five. Um, that was at Hobby Lobby and I just got me an assortment of them. So when I got home, I could kind of pick which one I wanted um, because I didn't really know what my other paper colors were going to be. So very first thing I do is everybody told me last week um, when I couldn't get the paint to stick to that duck that I needed to put baking soda. I had like three people or four people tell me use baking soda. So I did it guys. I put the paint in there and then I put the exact amount, same amount of baking soda as to paint um, ratio. It does a little chemical reaction. I don't know if you can see it in that, um, but it gets real thick and then it starts getting thin. I don't know I don't know, maybe it's like fuzzing up and then it's like, oh, okay, I'll behave. But um, anyway, so I'm painting the inside of the jars because I want to put um, something on the outside. So I first just give it um, one coat. Now, I put a second coat on here on both jars. Uh, I, this is the first coat, of course, and I'm showing you this stuff is just, uh, I don't know if I like it. Um, it's like painting with sand. And so... I, I have issues with it. Now, if it was on the outside of something, 
Maybe it would have looked better if it was solid underneath, but um, it took two coats to cover it because you can see if you're looking over there in that one, how it's so streaked looking. So I did put two coats on it um, before I start putting um, this next thing. So this is the technique that I want to show you. This is, we're going to stamp and we're going to use stays on ink. You have to use stays on ink. It will come off if you don't use stays on ink. Okay. So you get your little stamp and you ink it up and then I have it on a little clear block. Okay. And then I'm going to roll it from start you know, either if you're left-handed or right-handed, start from one side and roll it across the jar, okay? Now, because these stamps are clear stamps and not on a wooden block, you can see if you make a mistake. And if you make a mistake, once it dries, you can go back over the top of it and finish like the tips of the wings because that's what I kept messing up on was either the antennas or the tips of the wings. And so you can go back and fix all your mistakes Oh my gosh, yes, I made a mistake. Can you believe it? I know you all are shocked. But um, I had a couple of those that I, you know, did have to redo. I'm going to be honest. I haven't stamped anything since I started YouTube. I have not done any of my scrapbooking, which is just horrible because I have a daughter that is graduating in four weeks and her senior book is not done. So I'm going to have to spend a few days and get myself together so that I can finish up this kid's senior book. But anyway, so I just make a random pattern, um, and when you're stamping or making polka dots, this is the exact same thing you do. You go in a triangle pattern. So you want to put it, um, you know, high, low, to the side. Um, you're trying to not get anything the same height or straight up and down. So that's why I always say use a triangle. Now then, I'm showing you again where I'm going to put... <laughs> This is going to be the second coat, so I put it on there. Um, I started stamping them one night, and then I finished it the next day because I couldn't, I wanted the stays on to dry completely before I rolled it around um, because it, sometimes it'll dry, and then sometimes I had to re-ink my um, stamp pad, so it was pretty gushy. So um, when I say re-ink, you can add more ink to your pad so that it, because they will dry out, stays on, will dry out over time. So you have to buy the little reinker, and you can reink them. And um, I've had these pads probably for 12 years. So, all right. So here it is on the bar, and I really liked it. So here's our fifth project, and this is actually five and six because they have two different sayings on them, so I'm going to count it as five and six. So first thing I do is these are some blocks that when I remodeled my house, um, we took this off the bottom of the door jam, and so it's those blocks that um, the colonial trim sits on top of and kind of the fluted trim sits on top of, and so I was like, well, we put new trim up this last week, so I'm like, oh, well, I got these. So I just went outside, and there's nail holes in them, and they're rough as snot, and they've got um, caulking all over them. And so I just take this sander, and <laughs> I'm having trouble hanging on to it. I took it outside, and you're like, girl, do you ever wash your clothes? Look at that. No, these are just, these are my work clothes. So when I work, I am a horrible, messy painter. Um... My friend Diana always makes fun of me because I'll get it even on the bottom of my feet when I am painting the house. I don't know how I do it, but I do. So, you know, if you know this about yourself, don't wear anything nice when you're painting. And that's that's what I do. I have work clothes. So, now then I take them back in and I'm going to, I noticed that there was some nails. You didn't see them from the front, but you saw them in the back um, that had been shot through with a nail gun. So I just go in, I take my little nippers and pull them out. And then I go ahead and there's still some spots that the sander didn't get. Um, when you're out in the sun and it's glaring and you couldn't, I couldn't really see very well and trying to film. So I brought it back in and there was some um, spots that were just, you know, it'd been in the garage for a year or so. Um, I take it out and uh, I'm going to sand it smooth and take some of those dirty spots off of it. Now then, I'm going to cut um, a couple of, or I'm actually measuring for my um, stickers. They're not stickers, decals that I have made. One says, be kind, and the other one says, just be. 
Okay, so um, I designed these on Cricut and cut them out on Cricut, of course, and then I just put them on. Now, they look kind of plain when I get done, and so I'm like, okay, well, I need to add a little bit of black. So I just cut me a little bit of this stretchy ribbon. It, it's like underwear ribbon. I don't know. It's, it's like elastic, not underwear ribbon. It's elastic ribbon. I guess it would be underwear ribbon or sock ribbon. Um, you know how they put, you know, the stretchy um, lace on baby socks? That's kind of what it reminds me of, except it's black and who puts a baby girl in black. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, so I cut it and I just tied it in a knot and then I, I flagged the ends and that's it. I just hot glue it on. And for it to be such a simple project, it turned out super cute. And I was just like, I know I keep saying everything's so cute. I love it. I love it. But, um, you know, I do. I kind of like, you know, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Now, well, I guess I would because some things I do and I don't like them, but I still show them to you because. So here it is on the bar and I thought they turned out pretty cute. Now, this next project that I'm going to do <laughs> is a, an Oda. Okay, so I went, I was just trying to find something gold at Walmart and these candles, they're hazelnut and I probably won't burn them until, you know, Thanksgiving time or not Thanksgiving time, but fall but they had the right color and I needed some more yellow on my bar. So these were like 347. I couldn't beat it with a stick. So, um, of course I'm just going to take my razor blade and get that sticker off. Even though it says easy peel, bull butter. It did not easy peel. I ain't never found one of them stickers that comes off that jar right in the first place. So I just take some alcohol and rub an alcohol and rub it down and clean it up good. And then I'm just going to hot glue some ribbon on there. And, um, this is some, um, burlap ribbon that I got off of Amazon. I think there was like 12 of them for 12 bucks. And I think they had about, I think it was two yards in each one. And so I used them on another project that I'll show you on, uh, Tuesday on my next video. Um, I'll show you on there. So I Really, it was just, you know, two seconds to hot glue these on, stretch, cut it, stretch it around, take the stickers off, pull the top off of it here in a minute, and, and hot glue it. That's all it took. And it dressed up this $3.50 candle, um, you know, pretty good. I thought it, I thought it turned out pretty cute. Now, one thing I'm going to do here in a minute is I'm going to, um, see I'm like oh duh anyway um I'm loving putting all these stickers in here I've just figured out how to do this so I'm going to trim the wick on this candle um when you're burning candles uh definitely trim the wick with you know within a I think it says a fourth of an inch but one thing when I used to sell home interior that they told us was it was just something that we said I don't know it's an old wives tale never have a candle a, a, a candle sitting out that didn't have the ends burned, it's bad luck. I don't know if it is or not, but y'all take it for what you want. But anyway, so I always try to burn the ends of my candles. First of all, it just makes them look not just bought from the store, I guess. Um, it like you actually used it, whether you did or you didn't. I won't even put tape ears on tape ear candles on something without burning the ends of it just to make it look a little more authentic and like, well, you know, I used that. <laughs> so there you go. You can see it. And here it is up on the bar. And now I'm going to show you how to put this bar together or all the pieces together. All right. So y'all remember that Easter bar. So I cleaned it all off. And you're like, well, good Lord, lady, it's been two weeks since Easter. But anyway, uh, I, I'm finally getting my stuff together. So these are some gold napkins that I usually use around fall. But because it goes with my honeybee theme I, and I didn't have a scarf to put on the table um, on my coffee bar, this is what I decided to do. Now, I have to leave that coffee pot right there in that corner because of the cord. I don't know if the rest of y'all have a um, child that, loves coffee so much. I'm going to blame that on my mother-in-law and my, uh, my mother because they, she loved coffee when she was little. And so they would put like half a cup of milk and a half a cup of coffee. Well, she got where she don't drink a half a cup of milk anymore. It's just coffee. And by the time she was 10, she's just drinking black coffee. Now she's found out creamers. So she likes, 
uh, ton of creamer. And so she, her grandma, uh, Carolyn, had to get her um, a ninja coffee pot, which is just so funny that a teenagers, I think she was like 16 when she bought her that, and she squealed like she'd gotten, I don't know, a new car. It was pretty daggum funny. Anyway, so she's addicted to that coffee machine. So it makes tea and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's actually really neat. So I like to do a balance on this coffee bar. And so I try to do doubles when I decorate it. Um, now, sometimes I don't necessarily do doubles or, or make it even on both sides but most of the time I do so you know I'm just I'm gonna piddle around and fuss with it um and you'll just see I'll let you watch while I go you've watched all the projects but I always like to see how somebody uses the things they made in their house so this will stay up until probably oh probably May 1st and then I'll probably do either graduation, because we'll have graduation coming up, or I will do 4th of July on this one, or not 4th of July, but patriotic, because then Memorial Day weekend is, you know, not too far after that. So um, I like to change this out, because first of all, it makes me clean up her coffee mess, because um, she's got coffee grounds everywhere, and everybody's like, well, make her do it well. The kid is doing about all she can do right now. She's in a play, and she's been practicing five days a week for the last three weeks. Then she had prom last weekend. She has four college classes that she takes and two high school classes that she takes, too. So um, this kid's been a little bit busy. So And she has a job that she works um, some days, one or two days a week on the weekend. So she's doing about all she can. So Mama's baby and the crap out of her of course but um these flowers you can see that little basket i stuck over there i just like to stick um loose flowers in that one because like i it had red in it before because it sits over my kitchen is red as you can see red black and white and um so i just like to put loose flowers in that basket um this is one that i did for a flip a thrift flip back Oh, about a month or two ago, I guess. And um, anyway, so when you lo use loose flowers in, in baskets like that, then you can just pull them out and use the ivy or whatever bush you've put in there um, to help take it up the rest. And so you can change it out easier, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You can change it out, you know, for the season or like if you're like me, you change that coffee bar out every season. So, um, you know, you can just switch it up and switch it around. Now, this, um, that black um, tear tray that you're seeing there, because this is part of Corey's challenge over on um, Crafted by Corey. This video will be on her playlist today, and I will list the playlist below, and I will also um, list uh, Corey's channel. But this, and I will also list the video from the last challenge I did where I made that tear tray um a few videos back. So I think that was a month ago that I made it. And I'll show you how I make it with plates from Dollar Tree. So, all right. I'm about done, I think. No, no. I got to add this apron hanging out of this thing. So I was just looking for something with yellow in it. And um, since I had some yellow and green, that's one of my aprons that I had. Now, remember to go down in the, in the uh, description box below and go to that playlist and make sure when you go to watch Corey's video that you tell her that I said sent you over there and then watch all the rest of the girls in the playlist. And today is tiered trade minis and tiered trays. And so um, if you're needing tiered tray ideas, this is the best place to get them. They, they have some of the cutest ideas and things to make, and I know you're going to like them. Just, uh, take a look at everybody and tell them that I sent you over there. I think that would be funny. So here we go, and let's just watch this video the rest of the way. Can y'all tell I'm getting tired? That's what happens is I forget what I'm trying to talk to you about. Now, here's a picture of all of it together, and it just makes a cute little vignette, just like I did last week with the um, one I have in my living room. Now, if you're new here, I want to say, please subscribe, 
like, comment, and hit that bell. And I hope you stick around with us. And if you're old here, hey guys, I miss you. <laughs> Leave me a comment. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.